Worm is a web serial by J.C. McRae, also known as Wildbow. You can read Worm in its original format by visiting parahumans.wordpress.com or donate to Wildbow's Patreon at patreon.com slash wildbow. This story isn't intended for young or sensitive readers. Readers who are on the lookout for trigger warnings are advised to give Worm a pass. For a complete list, check the description for all of Worm's trigger warnings. Take that, you worms. It's dissecting worms time. Welcome to the weaker half of the two podcasts, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So we we that. knew that. We we knew that going in. We're the, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we're unique. I think we're we're yeah, unique. I like that word. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, Alan, as always. Thank and, you, Jacob. Uh, Michael, as always. Hello. Mm. Thanks, thank thanks you for stopping by. Mm-hmm. We've got we're looking at arc thirteen of Worm today. I don't know if either of you had uh, difficulty with this arc. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. what it was for at least the first half of this. I I I don't know. I, I like just I just had so few notes. <laughs> All well, I know is funny. I kept getting texts saying that <laughs> uh, I need a little more time to read this. Yeah, there was a few of those. <laughs> I have a lot of notes, but they're not... It's all about kind of structuring the moments here. Because... And we'll kind of go through it chronologically, I guess, kind of as we normally do. But I think a lot of this is going to really depend on how we end up wanting to structure the season. Because we've already mm. talked about probably moving around the Slaughterhouse Nine and Eludes, And we've talked about... Maybe, you know, delaying some of the reveals and, you know, some yeah. of that stuff, toning down some of the like gameplay elements of it in favor of suspense, that kind of thing. So I think mm. a lot of that is going to really shape and inform some of the moments in this arc. Uh, but that being said, I think we can leave some of that for a future season two recap. Yeah. yeah. Because. We're going to have some more answers at that point. I was going to suggest the same thing. Yeah. So kind of just looking at the arc itself, we can still kind of go through it. There's some, it's a meaty arc. There's a lot in here. That's. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Interesting. Um, let's dive in. I'm just, well, let's, just, let's just get for it. Let's just, let's just yeah. go. I'm going to dive right in here. Uh, I'm going to dive right in and say, I think the first couple of uh, chapters get cut. <laughs> I don't think, <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think there's much. I think the big thing here. Because again, trying to trying to approach it from like episodes of a of a show, the big moment of the last episode is going to be mannequin versus Taylor. Like that's the big fight. So yeah. then to come in here and have another mannequin fight right away feels like really poorly paced. Yep. Um. So I I. Honestly, would just cut uh, the whole fight. He's so cool, though. It is no, no. He's I, awesome. I'm not saying. I'll be honest. I'm not saying I've, ignore I've, it. Yeah, yeah. Also, I've thought he's cool in the past. He gets decidedly less cool every no, time I read. No, I won't stand <laughs> um, for this. <laughs> and and I think it's because he kind of is like he's getting his ass kicked over and over again. Yeah, that's and the reason he attacks so quickly is like he's not about to let this go. So mm-hmm. like, it's it's very desperate. You know, like, yeah. come on, yeah. man. She said no. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has two. So, I mean, his his coolest moment in the whole story is uh, his meeting with Arms Master. Coolest moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I do love the imagery at this time of his, like, his face and the laughter. And, ah, and yeah, the we gas finally have a mouth. Stuff. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't realize, you know, I always imagined it was just, you know, faceless 
Yeah. If there's well, I think no... he is. I think he is faceless until this. That's that's how I read it. I might be wrong there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. He like he he puts in a face in order to. That's because that's how he he disperses the yeah. gas. And it's but, the um, shattering laugh, which you know just creepy. So cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's really creepy. It's so it's a it's great imagery. I mean, you could have a ton of fun with it. I just feel like which I think is great if we do it. Yeah, we do it yeah. later. Yeah, yeah okay. that, I, that's fine. Also, we've talked about before. I don't like how many dumb rules are going on and how many times yeah. we talk about these rules. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, like, this is right off the bat. We're talking about the rules engagement delivered. That probably should have been, you know, the beginning of last episode. I think even before Taylor got attacked, mm-hmm. you know, honestly. Well, and um, I think I think you like I, I think we're on the same page here. I think you just simplify that way, way down. I think you put them earlier again, depending on how we kind of want to, sh- you know, shake up the the season. Um, but I think the rules are simple. It's like, don't interfere with us, uh, don't leave the city, that kind of thing, you know, or we kill everybody. Like that's that's basically because I mean that is the main rule, right? They don't want anybody leaving. And they don't want anyone any like, new the people coming in. Exactly. Yeah. So don't interfere with us and our candidates. Don't leave. And candidates don't leave the city. Yep. Otherwise, Bone Saw does a plague. Yeah. Which I, I don't genocide. even think you need to know that. I think you just need to say, hey, yeah. like nobody <laughs> leaves the city. And when people go, oh, well, you know, in the, in the PRT, they're like, why don't we mm-hmm. do it? And they're like, uh, you remember fucking Dickville, yeah. Ohio? And mm-hmm. they're like, oh, shoot, not Dickville. <laughs> Dickville. Mm-hmm. And that's the word I was looking for. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what the hell? We apologize to all of our clean yes. listeners. Oh, gosh. No, we don't. that you. out, to be honest. <laughs> Bite me. <laughs> Just put a bleep over the city. Yeah, over the city, yeah. Yeah. Just know it's Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all that they need to know. <laughs> oh. Anyway, but no, I agree. I think I think we're kind of on the same page. It's just too confusing. Again, it reads really well. It's really fun. Like Jack inter- Jack's interlude from last time. Um, it's really fun to read and sort of get into the world building from a from a reader's perspective. But trying to put that on screen and have it make sense and paste well and easy to follow, it's just that's not going to work. I don't think there's yeah, any yeah. any anywhere that works. You could maybe throw in. I think maybe throwing in Cherish and Imp striking the deal, trying to kill mm-hmm. Bonesaw and it failing, I think that's a pretty good... Uh, I think that's how you piece. open it. Yeah. I think yeah. that's your cold open. Yep. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Writing that down. Interlude's the cold open. Let's go. I, I really like Ayesha's interlude as a, as a quick scene. Um, would be really, really cool. A cool way of highlighting her power for the first time where the audience is kind of in on it because we've talked before about her, mm-hmm. about f- clever ways that we can mask her power from the audience, like just kind of putting her in the background and things like that. But being able to have her front and center where everybody's just not aware of her would be really fun to see kind of play out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, it's kind of it's quick. She, she fails her assassination attempt, runs into Cherish. They, you know, cut on the tension of striking a bargain. Yep, yep. I think which is a great deal. Um, uh, It makes this, you know, a lot more interesting with all the different politicking you've got going on between different characters and organizations. Mm -hmm. I think this is another one. Add Mm -hmm. in. Makes it nice and fun. (laughs) I'll, I'll be honest. Until the back half of this, I really don't have that many notes for this podcast. Um, yeah, m- most of my most of my notes come on come on the back half as well. Um, so I guess we can we can kind of get to that part pretty quick because I feel like that's where we're going to spend a chunk of our time uh, before we uh, jump there. Do yeah. we want to go over the last interlude with Pickett, or do you want to save that for the end? Uh, yeah, let's just talk about that now because um, because once again, I think this is going to bring up the director issue. Mm-hmm. Um, we've discussed yeah, before. Let's, we're let's, about to. Let's, yeah, let's talk about the director. Go through issue. 
bunch of directors really quickly. Spoilers, but this is a spoiler podcast. So, it is. You have been uh, warned. We are spoiling things. Yeah, we're about to go to through directors like a box of tissues. Um, and, you know, it starts with Piggott. We're going to lose Piggott. Thomas Calvert doesn't even get to show up to work. Mm-hmm. Tag shows up. And then... I, honest to God, can't remember who they replace. So I'm just going to say it was Miss Militia and they never got somebody because, you know, everything. Well, it's something like that. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I think you're kind of right. Somebody took over, but we don't yeah. see them, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so we're just going to go through so many of them and so quickly, too. Um, it makes me wonder how, if we can do better transitioning these people um like either combining or maybe mm-hmm. dropping one one consideration is thomas calvert is the mm-hmm. prt director this whole time which you know helps with the whole like ruling the city i yeah. think like i control the overworld and the underworld so you know that's the goal there complete control um You could have it, I think, maybe having Pigot have an assistant, a deputy director that's always with her. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, that's Thomas. Especially, this would be the highlight episode where he's, like, buckled down, helping her with all the paperwork because it's just too much. And she's like, you know, hey, Thomas, go home. And she's like, no, ma'am. Like, I signed up, you know, knowing that this was going to be a lot. And I'm here to take as much off your plate as possible. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when later it's revealed that, like, oh, she's dead, who takes over? Oh, her, you know, the deputy director, which is right. our boy. So, yeah. you know, I thought that would be a good idea if we showed him around. Because otherwise, he's just like, oh, this guy's getting transferred in. Oh, it's, you know, <laughs> it's it's Coil. Ta-da! Then, like, he <laughs> doesn't even make it to work. I know. It's so quick. I um, agree. I, I Yeah. I agree with that. I think um, I think Calvert has to be introduced earlier. I do like the idea of him taking over from Pickett as opposed to just starting with him because I think it plays into a bit more of his sort of uh, tone as a villain. Um, it, it feels sneakier if he if he pulls like a house of cards, right? You know, and he's been yeah, there the whole yeah. time and is working his way up the ladder and he's yeah, just yeah, getting to the top so. quickly because he can use his power to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, feels a bit more uh, validating for his character than than just being introduced with him in charge already. Yeah. Um, um, so I just think, you know, you pepper him in to other yeah. scenes, you know, like when that. she's like, hey, you guys look like shit. You know, have, and during the breakdown meeting, maybe have Thomas be there and be like, hey, you know, and just literally say like mm-hmm. a third of her lines. Yep. Yeah. No, uh-huh. I like that. And then uh, that that lets us that lets the Piggott uh, fall <laughs> feel um, <laughs> feel a bit better too. I think. Yeah. It feels uh, going to be easier to sell that. Yeah. Uh, post. So that's. Yeah, I was going to say we won't worry too much about post uh, Calvert yet. It's like a season three thing end of season three thing. Um, But after that, I feel like there's some ways we can work around that too. Yeah. Maybe Um, maybe other things in this. Yeah. uh, I, you know, I'm trying to remember exactly how long the slaughterhouse nine have been around, but perhaps having, uh, you know, instead of watching the video, the body cam footage, which, you know, we could absolutely do the found footage thing for Siberian tearing apart the proctorate. Yeah. Protectorate. Uh, um, yeah having maybe that just be something that like she was there when it happened you know she was one of Mm -hmm. the PRT officers when they got torn apart and you know Mm. ran through all the and we don't even need to show the fight just you know the heroes are like we got this they go in there they absolutely get their asses kicked cars get overturned as you know Siberian leaves and then what's her face Mm -hmm. goes in there and is like you know sees the one hero trying to heal the other one and they you know one guy's mm-hmm. got like you know 
no hands yep. or is dead or whatever. You know, and you know, she's coming in with the flashlight and the gun, and all the heroes are just destroyed. And that sort of could be her moment of like, heroes are weak too. Um, and they need to be organized because they went in there without a plan and they got, you know, they got their oh, ass. Man, back. see, now that works so much better as our cold open. Because you open on you open on Legend, Eidolon, Alexandria, and Hero uh, making their way through. It looks like an operation. And only Hero looks out of place here to the audience because we've never seen him before. So it looks like this is something going on currently. That's how you're playing it up. You're not playing it up as a flashback. Mm. They interact with Siberian. They're like, what the fuck is this? You know, reword that however you want to. Yeah. Now it, you're starting to put the pieces, the audience is starting to put the pieces together like, oh, wait, this is a previous thing. And then play that out just like you said. She goes crazy, yada, yada. Hero dies. It's a bloodbath. They're all over the place. You know, PRT officer is in there trying to clean things up. Just trauma struck. You know, you can see it in her eyes. And then you just do the whole fade to her eyes, you know, sitting behind her desk today. And you just make that visual connection of Piggott's history. Um, yeah. I think that works beautifully. Um, I mean, we didn't really, uh, we don't really have a good, like, interlude for, or I say post credit scene for arc 12. So mm -hmm. what if we did the, you know, the Aisha as the ender, you know, she's oh, for, sneaking for in, yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's sneaking in there, she cuts the throat, goes to the bathroom, and then Cherish goes, let's strike a deal, end episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like that too because that gives that gives Piggott a bit more uh a bit more of a character for as little as she's really here. It's nice when it's nice when these types of characters do have some personality to them, do have some agency. Mm -hmm. uh, because it makes their uh eventual demise all that much more impactful. Yeah. So yeah. Um no, I like that. I like putting her in the scene there. Because it makes sense, too. Like, any director most likely came from, in, in this world, most likely came from field work, from a field work yeah. beginning, yeah. you know? It just would make sense. So, I like that. Um, I mean, I think they even show that off with, like, all, I'm pretty sure almost all the directors were in the field and talk about field work that they were in. Okay. I mean, yeah. Thomas Calvert was there, you know, questionably, but he was there during mm -hmm. the Nilbog incident. So was Piggott, I'm pretty sure. Uh, mm. You know, Tag is there at the Simurg quarantines. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember the other two, but they definitely gave off like military officer vibes. So, no. Yeah. No, that makes sense. <sighs> That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like. I, I feel like we're doing good with those. Uh, yeah. Do you want to jump back to where we were then? Yeah. Yeah. Unless we got anything else to pursue? No, with I think those? that's. I think. Um, I think the rest, just uh, the rest of that, the uh, picket interlude, can be left as is. It's just you can just wrap up that that scene with her conversation with Legend, and uh, you know. The little the little talk to the words and everything like that that can that can pretty much just stay as is. Yeah, let's jump. Uh, let's jump back here, back into the old arc. Uh, so, if we're going to move past the mannequin fight, we get to this sort of planning phase with the undersiders, the travelers, and uh, and Coil, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I like this bit, and I like it because in my mind, again, depends on exactly how we want to restructure the season. But in my mind, this feels like a really nice uh, follow-up to the attack on Taylor's territory and and Shatterbird. Like this feels like, you know, if especially for toning down the rules and all that kind of stuff. Like, this feels like the villain's going, you know, fuck the Slaughterhouse Nine. Let's hit him where it hurts. How do we go after him? Yeah. And so, it, it, I, I really like this as 
as it makes more sense to me if I was watching a show that this type of scene planning and then the attack would be the bulk of a of a of a episode following the previous episode if I'm making yeah, sense. Yeah. Um I I do I do like that. You know, in this case uh, yeah. I, I think uh, you know that and then we skip. Yeah, yeah, no. I just agree. That's- well, especially <laughs> actually and as we're kind of talking talking out loud here, especially if we do want to move the picket interlude as the cold open because that interlude ends with them planning an attack on the nine mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. the kind of the hint towards the stash of Bakada weapons, which is so cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Let me so you you know, have, let me flip all the way over there because I wasn't looking at that. I was just going off of vibes at the pro- at the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, another thing I have in that interlude, um, mm-hmm. I've talked about. I'm a huge clock blocker fan, and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I also think that having more people be def- like defensive of Taylor on the PRT side. Mm-hmm. would be beneficial um, mm. for just like kind of showing this back and forth even in the hero side. Because there seems to be mm-hmm. just a lot of like, oh man, what do we want? Like, well, we we had, not only did we know, like, mm-hmm. because Arms Master talked about it, it got outed publicly. Like, mm-hmm. civilians know. Was it Sierra? Even asks Taylor, you know, hey, didn't you want to be a hero? And she's like, yeah, I really wanted to be a hero. I was going to be a hero. And then I got caught up in this and, yeah. you know, everybody screwed me over. Granted, you know, Taylor making bad decisions is what it is. Yeah. But, <laughs> right. but like, I really wanted to be a hero and I still want to do the heroic things, but without the label. And honestly, right. it's easier right. this way. So I don't think it should be that hard where like, some of the people, if Dragon were there, she'd be like, ah, I don't know how Arms Master got out. That's wild. And everybody be like, doubt. And then, <laughs> and mm-hmm. then also be like, hey, you know, without tipping her hand and knowing like, hey, I, I absolutely know who Skitter is. Just being like, I think we should give her the benefit of the doubt. Because that's, you know, we know that Dragon has done that for people like Canary and stuff mm-hmm. like that. We're like, hey, I think we should give her the benefit of the doubt. I think we should work with her. I don't know why we're not working with her. You mm-hmm. know? Um, yeah, we, we, we should have this and clock blocker go like, yeah, like, w- w- other than when, you know, as soon as Leviathan hits since then, which, you know, it's been a little bit, like, what has Skitter done other than hand out lots of su- medical supplies and food? Like, <laughs> It, you know, granted, there was, you know, some bank robbery before, but mm-hmm. everybody comes together at Le- the Leviathan fight. That's just how the hero criminal system works. And then mm-hmm. post that, Taylor has been doing nothing but helping, doing it like aid, you know, disaster relief. Right. So, so what, why, why are y'all on her case about this? And I think having some people go, you know, legend in his stupid Superman statement, like, ah, why isn't she good? And everybody going, well, you know, she's doing good things out there. She seems like a reasonable person. Mm-hmm. Why aren't we cooperating with them in at least some aspect? Yeah. Um, Makes sense. So, so having that uh, go through, I don't know, and not having it necessarily be a a aggressive conversation in the PRT, but maybe a, just a contention. There is like a clear divide between Miss Militia, Dragon, and Clock Blocker on one side potentially versus everybody else. And once again, versus is a strong word, but just, you know, mm-hmm. they fall in like, hey, maybe we should listen to her versus maybe not. Um, I think having that conversation and having that through line when we see them and when they interact with Skitter later, uh, how that plays out. Yeah. No, I like that. That's a good change. Plus, it just, it just kind of feeds that overall theme that Worm has of just sort of, you know, gray morality and all that kind of stuff. Just It just helps sort of yeah. 
feed that, which I like. Yeah, and Clock and, uh, Blocker is a troublemaker. So like, yeah, I still go with the thing that he he has a you know a crush on uh, on Taylor, which he does later, but you 100%. know for now. Like, it's just, he's still got the little bit of that infatuation that we play up a bit more. Where he's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, Skitter's also a troublemaker, like myself. So, like, <laughs> yeah, I like that. So, moving there into, yeah, all the, way uh, back. Yeah, all, of the uh, <laughs> all of the planning and then into the ambush and everything after that. Now, this will take a while. There's a lot that happens here. Like this is a this is a full episode, if, you know. Again, I sound like a broken record, but <laughs> we'll we'll space this out, kind of pace it a bit as we're kind of reexamining the whole season. But like between the interlude beforehand, moving into planning and then attacking, post attack, and Brian and his trigger, like it's a lot. There's a lot that happens here. There is a so, lot that happens here. Kind of going into the attack, you can go right into it pretty much from uh, the planning because you can throw in, like you said, like that in between there, trying to get the, the protectorate to help. They say no, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Um, I, th- I think having Skitter try and talk to Panacea, Panacea mm-hmm. uh, I think that's, we should still keep that. Um, just don't that have Manic yeah. interrupt that. I agree, actually. That, I forgot about um, that. That is a good, I like that conversation. Show how much of a little bitch Panacea is being a uh, child. I know, right? It's like she's, you know, doesn't have her frontal lobe developed or something. <laughs> uh, but then getting yeah. into the into the fight itself here, man, is is, is this is a fun one. So there's a lot to there's a lot to work with. The travelers are there. Uh, this is a big Genesis moment, which. Uh, mm-hmm. Genesis is kind this. of a big a big deal in this yeah. arc. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest. I forgot Genesis was a character in this story until re <laughs> until rereading <laughs> until rereading everything here. Like I remembered I remembered her power and I remembered a character having her power, but I completely forgot she was part of the Travelers. I don't know mm, why. Mm. But uh, uh, boy, did, did she get to shine? Yeah. She certainly shines. She's a lot more, uh, does a lot more than I gave her credit for the first couple times I read this. Yeah. Um, yeah. All of the Travelers, honestly. I, I mm-hmm. tend not to like the Travelers. Um, I love My first couple travel. read-throughs. And uh, I'm not going to lie, this this arc definitely won me over. Um, yeah. I think, I think they're a really interesting uh, parallel to the Undersiders. Because we're yeah. the undersiders, with the exception of Bitch, whose whose master power is pretty destructive. Mm-hmm. The undersiders lack a lot of firepower, but yeah. they make do with what they have, and they're really successful with it. The travelers yeah. are some of the heaviest hitters in the city. Oh uh, yeah, between Sundancer, Ballistic, and Genesis, and yet despite that. They really struggle in fights because they don't they don't want to fight. They're like other than Trickster, the rest are like pretty much pacifists. Annoyingly <laughs> so. Yeah, it does. It is annoying. And it's like it's really, really interesting to see these characters sort of wrestle with these powers that they have and not wanting to use them. Um yeah, really fun contrast. Plus, this is the really the first fight we get to see them even tr- fight at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is also, uh, there's a whole thing with Taylor interacting with Genesis and with the travelers and knowing what she knows about them. And, uh, you know, you're talking about the, all their pacifism. I think this is a great time to work on. Um, you know, we've had her work with Sundancer before. Mm-hmm. I love Genesis. But in the interest of if we wanted to stick with characters and have them kind of consistently go back and forth, maybe switching Taylor and Genesis uh, being Taylor and Sundancer somehow. Just to build on, yeah. yeah, Or maybe during the warehouse fight, it's her and Genesis. Just so we have some more consistent conversations. Right. Um, 
Uh, yeah, no, that that's just, smart. That is that is very smart. Um, no, I think that's a good idea. I would probably I would probably make the character Sundancer. Um, I think she's a bit more interesting. Yeah, uh, I think she um, does a bit more in the story overall. So it probably I think makes it, a bit more sense. Well, yeah, I think it makes it more sense uh, for it to be Sundancer as well, just because. Um, the moment when Taylor makes her kind of transgress unknowingly to Sundance, you're like, hey, right, is there any right. civilians there? And she's like, nope, go ahead and run your giant fireball through. Yep. Um, you know, I, I have that sort of moment where like Taylor has, you know, over two seasons now gotten to know Sundancer, has learned mm-hmm. uh, she's very, very, do- does not want to hurt people really doesn't even know why she's there, does require kind of a strong hand to tell her what to do. Otherwise, she won't do anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, And in the end is like, okay, this woman clearly needs me to make moral decisions for her as well. Mm -hmm. And goes ahead and does that. It's a lot harder if she's the one, like one of the people from the Travelers that she consistently interacts with. No, I think that's wise. I think that's going to help uh, a lot of the flow, a lot of character arc. Um, again, you know, you look at shows that do characters really well, and there's just, there's not a lot of them. Um, yeah. and, I'm sorry, there's not a lot of characters in those shows that do characters well. Like, a lot of people like to point to Game of Thrones and be like, wow, like, look at how many characters and character arcs there are. And the truth is, they do it very well for a few seasons. And mm-hmm. then everything falls apart and everyone feels like their character arcs were rushed and they didn't conclude everything well, obviously. Um, and I think, you, I think it's really hard to avoid that problem when you have a lot of characters. So yeah. you're going to get to these points where I think it just makes sense. It's going to help things overall. Like obviously, hardcore Worm fans, we want to see everybody to, <laughs> done uh, with you know, justice in, in this ad- adaptation hypothetically yeah. but yeah. It, it, it's it's you're gonna cut people it's tough when you have you know obviously favorite characters and when it comes to do you want to just have your favorite character show up or do you want like some sort of through arc to be done well mm-hmm. um, yeah yeah and i am a i'm a big proponent of i would rather lose a character in order to make the plot feel cohesive and better. I'm much more inclined to condense uh, than try and force something in. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. You know, I say that, I think about immediately about me trying to make, you know, the clock blocker Taylor thing happen. Uh, But, you know, (laughs) uh, personal preference. Yeah. Um, But no, I, I mean, I think about we, we all are doing our own writing projects as well. And my writing project kind of started with how do I make this as simple as possible? And I'm like, easy. The world is hallways. There's it's, it's the tiniest world imaginable. And there's a limited cast in the entire world that you can interact with. So there's no mm-hmm. questions about, oh, what about these people or what about they no like the cast and the universe is as small as it can get and that makes writing it a lot easier for me just so mm-hmm. that we can have through lines of character arcs and through you know all all the things that we're struggling with now yeah um, cuz this is the opposite this is an expansive world that's not only fictional but also non-fictional cuz it's set you know in the United States and Canada and all that so mm-hmm. like you're contending with so many different variables of like, ah, yes, I've got to have all the things from the real world correct and build on top of that with fictional stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so much. There's a lot. And uh, it's not going to be the uh, last time, nor has it even been the first time. No, I was going to say. We've already, we've had this conversation Mm -hmm. and we're going to have it again. I'm already thinking... One of my favorite minor characters in the series is uh, Othello, who is an ambassador. Um, yep. Got yep. my favorite power, I think, in the entire series, and I can't wait to get to it so I can own favorite power section of Brock May Book Club. But yep, um, yep, yep. there's like a 99.99% chance 
he doesn't see the light of day in any sort of worthy yeah. television show. So, you yeah. know, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen to us all. We're sorry. We apologize now. Tell us why we're wrong, please. Yeah. We want to. Which character, which one of your favorite characters would you be sad to see go, but you understand? Yeah. Write exactly. in the comments. That's, that's what we want to know. What's, what's your favorite character that you know has to be cut? Yep. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good question. Uh, Michael, make note. That's a good poll question. <laughs> you make a note. <laughs> I will make a note. Thank you. You're right. I'm kidding. All right. Well, let's get back into it. Uh, so yeah, we got the travelers there, fun conversations and working alongside them as they attack. Oh, so wait, hold on. Because we do have to capture... Did I miss this? I'm all over the place here. We do have to no, capture no, so, Shatterbird. Uh, so so first, Cherish. so first, l- let's just play this out chronologically like we're talking about. So mm-hmm. we start, we get... And maybe we've already talked about Jack's uh, terms, the rules of the game. I think we introduced that in the episode before. So this mm-hmm. is the coil, the underside of the travelers meet up to discuss uh, how they're going to attack um, the Slaughterhouse Nine. Taylor is like, we need to pull out guns. We don't even need the second mannequin attack. We just need this one. Like, we mm-hmm. need to pull out guns. We need to murder these people. And they're like, hey, while we're preparing, do you think you could go talk to Panacea? Maybe get her on board because, mm-hmm. like, we're, you know, we are trying to protect these people and we've got to figure out who they are and we think that it's her. She goes mm-hmm. there, kind of lets it slip that she is, but also maybe, like, runs away or says, like, leave me alone. You know, you're not my real dad. And then <laughs> does whatever. So, mm-hmm. and Skitter's just like, like, how are we supposed to protect her? If she, you know, if she doesn't want to be protected, like this is a problem we have to deal with later. We're just going to go ahead and attack the Slaughterhouse Nine. So they go back, they, and then we, you know, we cut to them on the roof. They're like, all right, are we ready? We have all those cool Ocean's Eleven style pre planned trickster switching everything in and out, which I think is just so cool. I forgot oh, about so cool. how, oh, we're going to go over that on, on the other podcast, but man, like majority of my notes are probably that fight and just about how cool all the things Trickster does. I completely forgot. He makes such good use of his power. Yeah. Um, yeah, does a great job. We interrupt our scheduled program to bring you a word from our sponsor, Zencaster, a one-stop shop for all your podcasting needs. When we first started this podcast, we knew we needed a service that would let us record remotely. After doing some research, Zencaster was the obvious choice. We started using Zencaster and never looked back. It's super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. All you do is log in, invite people to join your room, and start recording a high quality podcast right away. You can record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. You can rest easy even if you have an unstable connection, knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality. We do all our recording in Zencaster, and when the episode is ready, we can distribute it to all major podcast platforms. Zencaster has made podcasting so much easier with its all-in-one podcasting platform and tools. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code RockedInBayBC and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. That's Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code RocktonBayBC. And now back to our scheduled programming. Now, here, here's something we talked about, uh, you know, cutting mannequin from this, you know, the second mannequin fight. We either do that or we just have Mannequin be a more consistent, drawn-out villain for Taylor specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe yeah. we don't even have the fight before. Maybe she just finds like the dead people in the in the hospital van, and they're like strung up by like you know rubber tubing. Mm-hmm. like mannequins and she's like oh my god like mannequin was here you know 
She tries to attack him with the thing. He does the chittering laugh. It kills all the bugs. You know, he can kill the bugs. He disappears. Like, he's haunting her. And then finally, he does an attack and we have the fight. Uh, but otherwise, you know, he shows up and we immediately come to a draw with him. Like, if we're looking for a consistent singular villain, mm-hmm. um, I don't know if Mannequin's our guy. See, I was actually going to even go the other route and say, if anything, I think that Taylor kills him in that in that confrontation, the first fight. What? Because, I, hear me out, and remind me if I'm wrong, because it's been a minute since I've read past where we are currently, but I don't think Mannequin has too much longer to go in the story. I think um, the, honestly, I think almost all of his contributions the rest of the time are just him tinkering with Bonesaw. Like him and right. Bonesaw making the Cherish apparatus. Yep. And like, I think that's it. I don't, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Because I mean, he gets, I don't think he makes it much. He gets, I mean, you know what? I'm actually, I'm just going to just skip ahead on my notes here. I do have some notes for the, the future arcs. Oh, yeah. uh, do, 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 just looking around. Arc 14. Yeah, it's the next arc. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I'm looking at this right. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a some more, I'll do a more detailed look here. But it's coming up. It's not long before yeah. before he gets just glassed. So Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I was gonna say if it happens when they get crawler as well, then like it, it does. Yeah, that's that's exactly okay. Same, okay. I yeah, I honestly same. forgot when he went out. Yeah. So Oh yeah, there it is. Case, yeah. Middle of middle case, of next arc. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, like yeah, oh, man. That's actually kind of sad. <laughs> on it. I know. It they, they linger a lot longer than Heck. you remember. Yeah. Because he is such a of of all of them, you know, we talk mm-hmm. about memorability. For me, it starts, it's, it goes Bonesaw, Mannequin, Jack Slash. Mm-hmm. It, it, like, as the big three. Yeah. Um, part of that is the actual longevity of their characters, but the other part is, like, those are the ones with the most memorable moments. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you Bonesaw's just horrifying, so you can't forget about anything Bonesaw ever did without a lot of therapy. Jack Slash just because of his kind of essentialness to the story. And mm-hmm. Mannequin because he's got those great horrifying, you know, honestly, just two moments are enough. You know, mm-hmm. the Arms Master interlude is when he's at his most terrifying and then the warehouse fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's, you know, that's I didn't realize that he just yeah, kind of he, pitters he out. Gets, uh, yeah, he gets kind of off. Oh, man. Okay, I know, yeah, right? no. No, so with, I, I, with that, then I think I think make the fight a little bit longer if you want. Make it a bit more of a uh, you know back and forth, but especially because we talked about how Mannequin introduces the fact that he has Arms Master's nano uh, smashing knife. Yeah, and we talked called. about giving that to Taylor. Cause, yeah, having know, her get a hold of it in the, in the fight, and I yep. think that's really cool. Especially yep. you know we talked about one day she like hey, you know either she goes hey, Arms Master this is yours as a sign of good faith. Mm -hmm. Or he's like, uh, that's mine. I'll take that back. And she's like, no, you won't. It belonged to arms master. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I think, I think that's good. Also, if we've already had the rules established Mm -hmm. and this is him futzing around, perhaps this could be, uh, two characters, you know, Mm-hmm. We could add a lot of things together, like perhaps having Panacea be at her territory. Um, oh, yeah, looking, sure. Looking sure. for, looking for, because she's hanging around the hospital. I forget why. Uh, maybe she got injured, and because you know her power doesn't work on herself, she needed mm-hmm. medical treatment, and you know, was she'd run away from home, and this is where she was getting medical treatment. And Taylor recognizes her and is like, oh, shit. And, you know, of course, Panacea is like, fuck. She recognizes me. <laughs> Mannequin mm-hmm. comes to get her because, you know, the same reason that he doesn't like Panacea in the first place is because Panacea is the most helpful, mm-hmm. you know, person. And he hates people who help other people. Mm-hmm. Um, he, you know, maybe not realizing that she's 
terrible um, because it's not his pick. But he goes there to fuck with her. And Panacea dips immediately, doesn't try to help anybody, you know, showing what a piece of shit she is. Mm-hmm. And Taylor gets stuck fighting Mannequin. Right. And Mannequin, right. you know, always realizes that Taylor's doing all this and is like, okay, now I'm going to double fuck you up because, like, I was going to go after this person <laughs> for helping, but you're helping. I'll fuck you. And, <laughs> um, and that's when uh, we have the fight and Taylor wins. Mm-hmm. And because of that, he forfeits his turn or whatever. Mm-hmm. And maybe, maybe then you have Burn Scar show up and be like, hey, you know, you could have her, her yoink him out and maybe Bonesaw could turn him into something. You could have her rescue, but, you know, Burnsaw, Burnscar rescue him. You could have him just get murdered and the Slaughterhouse Nine now kind of have Skitter on their radar, which they didn't have before. Mm-hmm. And that's a good place to have Jack, that, that conversation where, you know, they show up and they give the announcement of like, hey, uh, we're about to scream that, you know, wake up the city, announce we're here with the whole glass shattering thing. Mm-hmm. That's a great time for Jack to show up with Siberian and Bonesaw to skitter oh, and go, okay, oh gosh. we didn't have you on our radar before, but you took down one of the nine single-handedly. And Jack, maybe start breaking down skitter. Like, you wanted to be a hero, you know, but you, man, you just keep doing bad things. Like, yeah, I, th- I think I would argue that probably it's probably overcomplicating it a bit, but I like, maybe, yeah, I like a maybe, few, you know. I like a few things you said there. One, because especially we kind of go back and forth with the rules a bit. I'm, I think we don't want to focus too much on the rules for the game. Um, yeah, I, in all honesty, I think it's probably simpler if we just remove them all together. You can still have them be quote unquote present for the nine, just not made aware to for the audience. Like if you just want to have it, you know, a casual line here or there that Jack drops so that hardcore yeah. fans can well, be like, think, oh, they're playing think, a game. But yeah, I, don't wanna... I think there are uh, some 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 rules we need to keep. One, uh, no no people coming in to help. Right, right. Uh, directly, directly. No yeah. direct help. Uh, nobody leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we end up uh, each one of us is going to give a test or is going to like do a test. And mm-hmm. um, if by the end of our tests, like they don't even have to say what they are, or how long they take by the end of our tests, uh, who, whoever is left, we, you know, we leave with that person. Um, but if you guys are able to keep more than one person alive after the final test, then uh, then we'll just leave. See, uh, I'm see, I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna keep pushing back just because okay. I think I think this is a fun I think this is a fun conversation. So in my mind, there even less is known. The okay. the yeah, nine yeah, yeah. simply the nine would simply they enter Brockton Bay. Everybody knows at this point, like we've established, the nine are a well known terrorist group of of villains, and yeah. everybody knows that they go around recruiting people. And that they only ever have nine members. We also know at this point that there's only eight members, right? We're 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 mm. we're sprinkling this in in conversations with the wards and Weld and the director, right? We're giving the audience the clues here so they can piece it together. So everyone kind of knows that nine are here to recruit their ninth member. So mm. I think mm. I think if all that's said conveyed from Jack and from the nine to everybody is we're here don't get in our way. That's all you really need to convey. Yeah, no, you, you know, know what? You've convinced me. I think you're right. Uh, but here's what I, yeah. you, did, you said something that I did really, really like. So, post Shatterbird screams, right? Right. We have the, their conversation in the, in the parking garage, whatever, playing mm-hmm. that out. Taylor gets back to her territory and Panacea shows up to help people or whatever, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll workshop how to get her there. But have Mannequin there for Panacea because Panacea is a target, right? Mm. So Mannequin shows up for her to, to challenge her, to put her through a test, and Skitter gets in the way. 
And this yeah. way you can, you still kind of keep that, uh, you kind of keep that whole fight the way it is. You still, what, like what you said, what, what putting, uh, putting Skitter on the map in Jack's eyes. But two, you could also put Burn Scar there at the end, who's kind of maybe just watching and waiting her turn. And, you know, maybe she does take Mannequin's body back or something like that. And like, oh, you know, Bonesaw wants him. You say whichever you want, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Because she can just dip in and out with her teleports. She doesn't even need to fight. Um, and that way, that way you can, because if, especially if we're going to go down the route of slowly revealing who has been targeted, right? Mm. Like we talked about saving the Arms Master reveal until he shows the knife to Skitter. And then the yeah. audience being like, oh, wait a minute. What, why does he have that? You know, little bits yeah. like that. Yeah. So having, so then Skitter being able to put together the pieces at the end of that fight being like, why was he here? Then putting, realizing that Panacea is here and kind of making that connection. I feel like there's a lot you could do with that. And I realized that we are an episode behind where we started this, this uh, dissecting worm, but I think this is good. <laughs> no, no, no. Part of it's uh, going before and after, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's trying to make it cohesive, so you got to dip in exactly. and out. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, and then you're, you, it gives you room to to scatter in uh, other scenes to cut to, right? So you could cut yeah. to uh, a scene with Panacea, right? Um, you know, part of her in a loot if you wanted to put that here, things like that. So there's a there's a lot of ways you could work that in. Um. Mm, mm. I like it. All that being said, if we go that route and Mannequin is not at play during this fight in arc 13, nothing really changes, which I think is what we were getting at. Was like, this fight still plays out pretty much as is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I have any notes for this. I don't think other than, man, it's really cool. Um, it is really cool. Alec gets another moment to shine controlling Shatterbird. Um, did I miss when Gru gets captured? He gets captured off screen, but it's because that he gets uh, he gets swapped. He tells Trickster to swap him with um, uh, who is it? A Cherish or somebody? Oh my gosh, why is it not? Like I know Taylor offers to like go, and he's like, ah, you're yeah, not going to be able no. to run fast enough with those burns, and then they dip yeah. out. And I completely missed that, that was putting him in like that much harm's way mm -hmm. um, when I read it because I'm like, you know, obviously, I know he gets captured. I just like, we get to the next part and it's like, ah, they've got Gru. I'm like, whoa, when did that happen? Yeah. No. Um, oh, it is Cherish. So, is, is it Cherish? Yeah. Uh, they capture. Uh, I assume a body. Yeah. Right. Well, because it's, they capture Shatterbird and Cherish, so it's one of them. Either way, it's one of them right. and Gru is captured. Yeah. yeah cause, so cause, in this uh, case, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe making up, or you know, just buffing that up a bit. Um, mm -hmm. having that be a big moment where you're like, ah, no, I'll go, and you're like, no, I got this, and then mm -hmm. zoom, you know, it's already yeah. in there text wise, but I feel like bumping it a little bit to make it more of a moment rather Yo, than an aside. Definitely, uh, like, no, I got this. Yep, you know. And then you know, because you get they get back and they talk for a little bit, and then they're like, "Oh, where's Gru?" I'm like, hey, "Did you not know?" Yeah, he was I agree. Missing <laughs> for that I don't like long, that. like I also don't think we give them as much time between the end of the fight and then going back for Gru, because it feels like it's a few hours in the story. Because they yeah. go back to the base, they like they torture, uh, torture, they question, cherish. No, it's torture. What am I saying? Tattletale or uh, or uh, Skitter. Beats the shit out of her. Um, yeah, kicks tort her a few times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, tortures, tortures her. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Her, no, no, like, yeah. There you go. It is a bit in terms of pacing. We'll be you know talking about this as a mm -hmm. uh, in a longer episode. Because um, if you were gonna do short, you know, our short 23, 25 minute episodes. Yeah. Um, Which I will. I will with, just say I don't think we've ever really. Talked about this since coming. We mentioned it kind of early on, first couple episodes. I don't think there's any way you do these in like less than a forty-five minute episode. Yeah. I really don't. Um, but in this, you have her go like, "Oh, um, you know, she gets back. Where the hell is Gru?" And they're like, "Uh, captured by the nine. 
that would be the end of a shorter episode. Right. Otherwise, it just, you know, part two is, you know, she's beating the shit out of Cherish. And it, be, you know, brings that like, where, you know, where is she? <laughs> it really is. Um, you're, getting, you're getting that scene. Yep. Uh, we have the reveal about Arms Master escaping his confinement here, which, you know, oh, I, I don't know if necessarily we need to, he had escaped his confinement, but, you know, reveal that like, oh, he's been here under house arrest this whole time. Like, oh, they mm-hmm. still kept him around. Mm-hmm. Like those bitches. Yeah. Um, that also explains why the knife was so present. Yeah. Uh, you know, yep. puts more of the clues together. Um, talking about the deal she strikes with the imp and the fact that they'll never, you know, they'll never let him out alive. They'll never take us back. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great, you know, great moment. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think you keep do... it. I think it's just, I think it's just faster. That, you know, yeah, you, they yeah. get away and, and they, Right away, Taylor is where is Where grew. the hell is grew? Exactly, and you just go right into that whole conversation, kick Cherish a few times, and and move on from there. So they're you know they're back at it right away, and there's still because part of the, at least to me when I'm reading it, part of the part of the, the exhaustion that's there is is the fact that they haven't really recovered, and they come back and then they just get overwhelmed by the nine because that first fight really seems to go in their favor. Yeah, they don't kill everybody, but they quickly take care of Cherish and Shatterbird and yeah. chase the others away. So, like, it feels like, oh, this was too easy. We, we can go back out and get Gru. This is not going to be a problem. And then they just get wrecked in yeah. a horrific and gruesome fight. Um, a slight note here when mm-hmm. during the planning stage. Um, mm-hmm. I think it would be important... Uh, to have Trickster and Taylor maybe kind of be the forefronts in the planning um, because they're kind of the most bloodthirsty Mm -hmm. and the most tactically minded. Um, Yep. So having them have sort of this synergistic moment between each other, I think will really lend to a good, you know, Civil War poster shot of you know, Taylor on one side with the Undersiders and Trickster on the other side facing off against her with the Travelers mm-hmm. uh, when we have that kind of, that, that you know, the face-off. Um, having, showing that they are, you know, they are both alike and very smart when it comes to tactics and using their powers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it makes it that much more of a, a thing when you essentially have two of these chess masters go against each other uh, and future arcs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yep. uh, I think that's something just to just to bump a little. Yeah. Um, no, I, I like that. It, it, again, we're all about, and by we I mean me, but uh, we're all about <laughs> that uh, that subtle foreshadowing and and uh, you know hinting at at future events, and I'm all for that. So the more of that we get, I'm gonna say yes to every time. Yeah, I love yeah. that stuff. Um, so they, they quickly track down, you know, using Tattletail to track down where mm-hmm. Slaughterhouse Nine is. They go in. Oh, I, I love that. Just got to say though, that's just another great Tattletail line where, oh, you know, sure. looking at, looking at Cherish, where are they? Cherish basically like, I'm never going to tell you. She's like, oh, you already did. Like, it's all she needs. Yeah. It's My just, favorite is, you like computers? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> exactly. What? Ah, uh, got your pen. Yep, thank you. Um, <laughs> talk more about that in book club. Yeah, uh, no, really. Great moment. No, they get back out there. Okay, this scene, the the rescue attempt on Gru, mm. is horrifying. And I feel like this scene really visualizes the style that I want all of season two to have which is this terrifying view of the nine. And, you know, this is a conversation you want to have with your directors and your uh, editors and everything like that. But like, this is the culmination of who the nine are. Yes. And it's yes. brutal and terrifying. And I, it needs to hit well when you see it. Yeah. You In see, terms of moments yeah. that like, I will never be able to undo. It's grew in the meat freezer. Like, 
Oh God. It's it's that is a nightmare scene that has stuck in my brain for <laughs> all of my life. It will never leave uh the nerve endings going everywhere. Oh. Just oh. it's oh it's so I hard. like it. It's fantastic writing. Mm-hmm. I hate it. Yep. Thanks, <laughs> I hate it. Thanks um, so much. I hate it. As as much and, as I have grown as a as we've been kind of doing this and reading it again. I've been drawn more and more towards live action as where I think this would really shine, especially with a lot of the conversations yeah. that we talked about. But if that scene of the freezer isn't the most like uh, horror anime imagery ever, like oh yeah, I I can only see that with like you know just some of the great body horror animes visually that I can mm-hmm. think of. It's, it's just like. Yeah. Attack on Titan sort of imagery. Uh, just yeah. really gross. Really, really gross. Yeah. It's honestly, it's, it's you know, scenes like this where like, who can do uh, Saw, you know, the Saw series animated? Right. <laughs> the, like that aesthetic, because that is what Bone Saw is. Oh, she right is. Here. Um, and, and I, like, it, it really did make me go like, like, oh, which animating studios, if we, you know, this was not live action. Because mm-hmm. if it is live action, I think it just hits so much harder for the gore slash like the just the creepy, uncomfortable mm-hmm. griminess of this mm-hmm. that uh that that narrowed down like you can't I don't think even Invincible, uh, whoever did you know, the animation oh, yeah. for Invincible, yeah. not gonna be able to pull this off. Yeah. Um Maybe Fortiche, you get pretty grimy with the yeah. Undercity. So, like, I could see them being able to do it. Um, yep. But, like, even then, I'm like, ah, could they get, like, would they be able to do it far enough? Like, right. Uh, and, and when you start talking about like anime, I'm like, okay, the Castlevania guys could probably do this. Yeah. Um, mm. But then we talk about like anime, and I'm like, yeah, there's a few anime that, Really go into some body horror and, uh, you know. But you do, it, it, but you're going to yeah. always have that problem with animation. I say problem. It's not a problem. It's a stylistic distinction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Where there's a, there's, there's a disassociation when you're watching an animated clip as opposed to a live action one mm-hmm. where it just won't. It's just by nature of the, of the format isn't going to hit as hard. Like I love yeah. Invincible. I love that it's animated. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a really, really well done show. But yep. the the scenes, the gruesome scenes, especially towards the end, would do not hit as hard as they would in live action. I don't think anyone could say yeah. they do. Yeah. Oh, they just wouldn't. Goodness, no. Um. Um. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Brutal. It's gonna be a tough one. Either uh, way, not for us to decide. Yep. Producers, have fun with that one. Have fun with um, strings of nerve endings. Uh. Bonesaw yeah, laughing. Think, yeah, Bonesaw laughing. Uh, them in the vans, I think. Once again, if we were if we were in a season, you know, doing a two-parter episode or, you know, even the transition for this is them in the vans just doing their different ticks. You mm-hmm. know, Trickster smoking out the window. Taylor maybe just, mm-hmm. you know, bopping her foot because she clearly wants to run. Uh, Lisa playing with the scar on the inside of her mouth. Mm-hmm. They get there. You know, they get ambushed. And... It's not even everybody. It's just Bone Saw and having mm-hmm. her wipe them all out. I think does a good job of bringing back honor to the name of the Slaughterhouse Nine mm-hmm. after Mannequin. You know, we'll just say for now, Mannequin just gets offed mm-hmm. at, at the fight. I'm okay with you know making that our canon for right now. Mm-hmm. He gets yeah. offed in that fight. Goes out kind of like a bitch for our first direct you know he does he does no matter how you want to write it if taylor wins that yeah, fight it's already been a bit of a bitch he, yeah. yeah he already goes out kind of like a bitch anyway yeah in every fight so <laughs> in this one let's yeah. let's just he goes out like a bitch it's like oh man the slaughterhouse nine while they came in they did the shout it was really terrifying all the stuff been leading up to this kind of a letdown he's kind of a little bitch only to have bone saw be horrifying yep. like it's a draw and oh they're not that bad then bone saw mm-hmm. yep. um, mm. 
Honestly, if you wanted to throw in, just because visually it's horrifying, we did sort of say we probably were going to cut the uh, interlude where they go and fuck up the merchants, which makes sense, I think. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. if you did want to throw in like a, a, a small bone saw plague there where everybody pops, you know? If you did, yeah. the, if you did like, because the, the plastic surgery bit that she does is terrifying. So yeah. having all these civilians who kind of vaguely resemble Bone Saw uh, screaming and running all over the place, and then like popping and exploding as they're ooh, begging, like ooh. which is <laughs> it hurts to even say. Like I don't even. It's just <laughs> such a visceral, vis- visceral image. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I think I think this is where, uh, in addition to 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 Shatterbird, because her scream is terrifying too, but in a different way. I think I think Bone saw this is their moment where the nine uh, remind people who they are. You yeah. know, yeah. So I I agree. I like I like that Bone saw basically takes care of everybody, and uh, is really only caught off guard at the end because of Brian's second trigger. Um, but. I mean, everything like that should play out. I, I don't have an issue with the way it's written in terms of the way it would be portrayed on screen. She darts everybody. They go to sleep. She's talking to Taylor. Is, has the whole conversation with the passenger, which is some great world-building drops that we need to be including mm-hmm. anyway. Um, so we throw that in there. Have Parian swoop in. I love, love, love that if... I, I love Parian as a character. And if yeah. we do want to show her more often... I think her having we should her whole family get wiped out by Bonesaw, giving her that little bit of an arc um, and some development. I love the fight that they have briefly, and then Brian's second trigger and uh, everything after that is just beautiful. Uh, it's yeah. horrific. It's shocking. Um, have Bonesaw, you know, get all pouty and needs to leave. Like all of that can play out pretty much the same. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't really have any notes on that front. I love, um, I love Brian killing Burnscar. It's so good. Oh. It's so it reminds me a yeah. lot of um, the scene in uh, in um, Hunger Games, the first one, uh, which I rewatched recently, like a few months ago, actually. Yeah, R- really low budget. I forgot how low budget it is. Very, very low budget. Yeah, but yeah. It does a really good job with what they have. Um, very towards the very very end, the one guy from district, uh, like ten or eleven, uh, the other guy with the with Rue, the little girl that gets killed, the other guy mm-hmm. from that district, um, where he at the very end he smashes the one girl who's attacking Katniss against yep. the side of the airplane, and it's just mm-hmm. brutal and it's quick and he's doing it just for vengeance for Rue, and it's just like. Yeah takes her, yells at her, and just smash, smash. Like, that's what I'm imagining Brian does here to Burn Scar. Like, it's so quick. It's just brutal. It's for revenge and nothing else. It's just just a smash until yeah. you're dead. Like, uh, I think of the, in terms of head smashing, I believe it's the raid or the raid two, where there's a scene where he, like, essentially dribbles the guy's head like a basketball against the wall <laughs> all the way down as the guy's body is falling. Uh-huh. So, you know, it's like hitting him against the wall, but as his body's going down, he's continuing to hit it against the wall. Mm-hmm. And like, and, you know, until he's completely on the ground, I was like, oh man, that's, you know, yeah. man, brutal, brutal. Uh, and... Uh, I think I think in this case, because I think Jack comes back and stuff like that, mm-hmm. maybe just having Siberian and Burn Scar show up. I like that too, actually. Because um, Siberian, of course, has a vested interest in Bone Saw. Burn Scar is like, hey, we come to get you. Jack says we need to like we need to go. More heroes are, you know, the heroes are on their way mm-hmm. now. Like, yeah. Uh, pack it up. And this is where. Um, you know he's tr- you know she's like oh I'm gonna take imp or whatever you know th- this one I've mm-hmm. got you know special plans for her the, you know it coalesces Siberian goes to you know maybe it even it even grabs Bonesaw's hands to start yeah Siberian steps forward and disappear or yeah no no we'll start with like they show up 
all of a sudden, Siberian steps forward. The darkness is coming out. Siberian disappears. Mm -hmm. Um, And instead, we get Shadow Gru, Mm -hmm. which then grabs... uh, Grabs bones saw. Briscar goes in to feel it, yep. you know, turns, maybe lets go lets go of bone saw. Oh no, I like I like um I like so let's say bone saw says, okay, fine, I'll take imp. Burnscar goes over to grab imp, and that's what gets Brian mm, up. Mm. And so yeah. that's why he grabs Burnscar because he's got a hold of his sister. Yeah. And uh yeah. you know. There's not We've even got a the question, Siberian though. power to grab Burn Scar, yep. eat the Everliving Daylights here, which I think is a great time for just Bone Saw to run. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yep. Calls it quits, realizes that like, oh, I can't, I can't actually win against this, and she just dips. Um, but give so, her a cool, give her like, a, oh man, this is you know, I w- wish I had more time. Ruin everything. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I, you know, I gosh, like I wish I could stay. Maybe even yeah. gets the hard drive that she's wanted so badly. Like, oh my yeah, gosh, right. this is perfect. Doesn't care about the fact that Burn Scar's dead. Oh, like, yeah. just, no, no, oh no, my no. gosh, like, I, I can't believe I've recorded it. You know, yeah. I got that second trigger. You know, I've been working so hard to do. Yeah. Oh, you're and so then beautiful. Tips. Yeah. And like, oh my, yeah, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Like, I can't believe I got it to happen. Right. You know, even yep. though Burn Scar's lying there, you know, brains out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then she runs away. Yeah. Because um, otherwise, I, I I do feel as if it's a little bit deus ex machina. I know it explains it later on, but mm-hmm. feels a little out of place there. Um, feels better if we have the lead up like, oh, like the darkness starts really pouring out, which goes to the imp, the, the, you know, having Siberian disappear and for the Gru to take place and all that. Yeah, like I mean, having, you, you could even... I mean, you could easily, because I, 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 again, I like the way they explain it, so we can probably keep it. But if you didn't want to, you could easily just have Siberian just not taking no for an answer and just dragging Burn, uh, Bonesaw out and then, you know, being like, wait, grab Imp, and then have Burnscar go back to try to grab Imp and then play the rest of that out. And then just have Siberian just leave with Bonesaw, just kind of dragging her. Yeah, bit. yeah. You could, I mean, you could just do that and not have to worry about trying to explain away anything else at this point. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm just thinking about how, um, yeah, 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 we can do that. We do that. Um, then we have Walt second trigger event. We have, Mm -hmm. uh, the visuals for that, which, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I think is open to artistic interpretation Mm -hmm. of however the director wants to do it at the time. Yep. Uh, so not a whole lot to talk about there other than, you know, it'd make be a it fun, good. yeah, fun scene to kind of storyboard, but uh, nothing to really script at this point except for visualize the second trigger here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. they get back. They get uh, back, and then uh, Taylor and Brian have a little heart to heart. Um, I, I I'll be excited to kind of go through this uh, with the book club because I have some thoughts on this chapter, but just in terms of kind of for for story beats in the show. I do think Brian's a little harsh here. I mean, it makes I, sense, but... Yeah, I mean, we talk about we literally have the same thing with Taylor. Like, she's got a concussion. Yeah. yeah you know, right. trauma. Yeah. You're a little rattled. You do a lot of mood swinging. You know, yeah. there's a lot of reasons for why this has happened. I agree. I think he is a little harsh. Um, at this, I, I think, honestly, this whole conversation would go... You can keep almost everything, just have better transitions from one like topic to another. And mm-hmm. this would play out like, oh, this is his reason for getting maybe more upset about this. Yeah. And Taylor being like, hey, you've got a concussion. I know what that's like. You know, you're lashing out kind of like I did. And he's like, you know, I, like I know that. And it's upsetting me that I know that, but it doesn't stop me from being angry at you. Like, I'm really like, yeah, I agree. And I, th- I think it works better too if, um, again, uh, I think this, this is just kind of scene that works better in live action, but if the, if the actor who's ever playing Brian in this scene is also just very clearly wearing his emotions on his sleeve, he's a kid. He's 17 years old. He almost lost 
all of his friends and his sister are like the only thing he cares about. Um, so like get like I was listening to the audiobook for this and mm-hmm. love the audiobook. Does a great, great, great job. But it's hard to it's hard to read emotional scenes like this um, well. And so it's it's easy to even even just reading them yourself, not just listening. Um, it's hard to it's hard to put in the correct emotion sometimes. So I think you can keep a lot of the language. I would change some of it, but you can keep a lot of the language and just have Brian r- like right on the line. Like he is he is having a breakdown. I mean, yeah, everything that happened to him, being flayed open, second trigger, losing everybody, almost losing everybody. Like yeah. he is, he is at the end of the rope. As he's as he's as yeah. at the end as you can be. And so, I think just having a really emotional scene will overcome a lot of the of the uh, harshness of the language. Yeah. No, I I think that, and then like having you know, she's like, well, then I better go, and he's like, no, you know, I don't yeah. go. Essentially, has. A very awkwardly phrased and terribly timed, you know, somewhat love confession. <laughs> yeah. And then I think it's a perfect ending for them sitting on the couch. You know, don't go. I can't like I had like I need somebody. Please, Taylor, stay with me. Mm-hmm. Like. And. They're both miserable. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's a great you know, exit shot of Taylor on the couch, you know, looks at him and is like, you know, essentially as a relation, like, fuck, like, mm-hmm. exactly like it said, I got what I wanted, just not at all how I wanted it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. And if that is not the, the subtitle for the whole show, <laughs> 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 yeah. I got what I wanted, just not how I wanted it. <laughs> I got it the worst way possible. Yep, exactly. Uh, um, I think. I mean, I think that that puts a nice little capstone on this on this yeah. episode. Uh, two asides, real quick. We'll talk about the other one. Uh, mm-hmm. Cranston and uh, whoever the hell Tattletail's winking at as our oh, wait. minor characters that we maybe need to like keep yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe we just have Cranston show up a bit earlier as Coil's like intermediary for Taylor. Yeah, something um, like that. Just something easy. I think that yeah. works. Drop and then uh, just obviously make you know Brooks Senegal whoever the hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, I think that's the easy the one. one that that maybe Tattletail is uh, in her harem. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the easy one to fit in. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, without further ado, uh, I think I think that's really it. I think that, that kind of puts a nice little bow on it. Can you kind of wrap it up here? Pretty good episode. Um, I can't believe we're wrapping up the Slaughterhouse Nine this fast. We've got a yeah, we've got a, we've got another arc um, for the Nine, and uh, and then we're kind of done with them now. It feels quick, but when we sit down to plan this out and space it out, I think we're going to put some pieces together. I think these episodes are going to draw out quite a bit because we've because if if season two, assuming let's just for now let's say it ends with arc fourteen, the next arc, that's mm-hmm. arcs nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's five arcs, way less than we had for season uh, season one or six arcs. Can I count? I can't count. Five arcs. I can't count. Thank you. Um, Very nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but these arcs are longer. There's a lot more to them. And there's a lot more that we've talked about. Oh, we got to space this in. We've got to put this in, right? We really, really want the Assault and Battery interlude spread out here. We really, yeah. really want the uh, the Slaughterhouse Nines flashbacks. We really want a few more scenes with the wards, right? Um, mm-hmm. We want a couple more scenes with Perry and uh, probably Flechette. So, like, there's, we really haven't talked about that yet, and maybe that'll be its own episode at some point. But there's a lot that we do want to sprinkle in here that's really going to stretch. They're going, it's going to add up quick. And yeah. I think, I think you're looking at a, even with these five arcs, I think you're easily looking at eight episodes, eight, eight good, like 40, 50 minute episodes. 
um, especially considering fight scenes and things like that that will drag and and take time. Um, you're gonna have you're gonna have some good amount of stuff to do here. Uh, the next arc is long. <laughs> there's a yeah. lot in it, so there's um, gonna be quite a bit there. Yeah, uh, something to be thinking about as we move forward because of how awkward the next arc see like two arcs even Mm -hmm. is it even two arcs one arc two arcs two arcs Mm -hmm. um are about to be um we might want to look into uh our next big problem um which will be the tying in the coil problem Mm -hmm. uh where we're you know kind of honestly coming back to our original big you know big -hmm. problem here um, mm-hmm. how do we tie this in? Because I think there's a couple ways that fit pretty naturally, mm-hmm. uh, but we'll talk about them when we get there. So yeah. keep that in mind yeah. uh, as we move forward. How do we how do we successfully uh, and coherently in a season of television tie in Coil's arc? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it'll be fun. Stick around. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, with that being said, I think we're I think we're done here. I think our work is done. Yeah. Tune so. in uh, next week for our Brockton Bay Book Club, and we'll see you in two weeks for Dissecting Worm. Give you time to read those longer arcs. Yeah, you're gonna need it. They mm-hmm. they get long. A lot to read here. Arc 14 is gonna be a blast. It's a long one. A lot of good stuff there. A couple of interludes, a little fun interludes. Looked ahead a little bit. Spoiled myself. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Always spoiling yourself. <laughs> But uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, we've, we're having so much fun with this, if you can't tell. This is a lot of fun. And uh, we love and appreciate all your comments, all your support. Uh, let us know. We've had a few, a few people who have been uh, giving us some great ideas. So uh, we love to hear them. Yep. We've missed a lot of things, a lot of really fun ideas and concepts out there. So let us know what you think. Reach out to us, any of our platforms. Uh, links are all in the bio. And uh, thanks again, Alan for joining me as always and Michael for making us sound good. Thanks for having me on, Jacob. Mm -hmm. And uh, until next time, take that, you worms. Take that, you worms. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for listening. Read along with us at parahumans.wordpress.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you love? What did you hate? Anything you think we missed, etc. As long as it's kind. If you'd like to get in touch, you can find us on Twitter, Threads, Instagram, TikTok, and Reddit at Brockton Bay BC, or click the link in the description.